Hi, I'm Blythe McCarthy, the Andrew W. Mellon Senior Scientist at the Freer Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sackler Gallery, the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. The object I'd like to highlight today is a lacquer box made in Japan in the modern era to house a collection of Korean archaeological materials. Freer purchased this box from the Japanese dealer Yamanaka and Company in 1917. It's the first of two that came into the collection. This one he purchased and the second was a gift. I've always been intrigued by this box because I love puzzles and I love stories and this box has elements of both. I first learned about this box when we were studying a group of beads that are in the Freer collection, they're comma-shaped, and in Korean, they're termed kogok, so Korean beads. Some are made of glass and some are made of stone. And we wanted to find out if we could tell which ones were glass and which ones were stone, because visually, sometimes glass can sometimes appear to be stone. So we used physical and chemical methods to tell the difference we were able to tell that the, some of the glass ones had lead in them and that was a, a good marker for the glass. And in terms of physical methods, uh, looking at the stone ones, they since they're manufactured from a piece of stone, they tend to be flatter and have a flatter profile where the glass ones um, that were made in a mold tend to have a more rounded profile. We wanted to know this uh, because the type of glass can actually help you date um, Korean glass because it's different glasses were used at different times. So we started then to look at the other objects that came with these beads into the freer at the same time. And there were over a hundred that came in the box. Objects ranged from, there were a lot of beads, but also small decorative objects of shells and uh, some small ceramic pieces, some metal, some gold, and as you can see here, some arrowheads. And these were all placed in the box, which we found out when we were looking at it, I actually had a map on the underside of the lid that listed archeological sites associated with each of the trays that, that made up this segmented box. And so then the next question was which drawer were these beads from. And so I was able to spend half a day going through the freer records and uh, objects in storage to try and track down and sort out what objects had actually come from which drawer and thus were associated with which archaeological site that's listed on this map. Because like many museums uh, in the early 20th century, after these materials came into the museum, they were sorted by material type and removed from the box. And so they didn't have the labels that had originally placed them in the different drawers. So we were trying to put back this puzzle together to understand which drawers these materials came from and that would give us a clue to the archeological sites that they were from. Freya wrote very important on the inventory list, showing the esteem that he held these objects in. And we went and took that inventory list and separated objects out that had the kagok in them into the first two trays. We were able to associate them with the first two trays of the box. And the analysis that we did actually is consistent with uh, coming from those sites and time periods at the first analysis. But there's more work and this box actually remains a puzzle. We were able to look at a small number of the over a hundred objects that this box had. The work that remains to be done uh, is to make sure that even though we know that now to the best degree, which objects were in which tray, what we don't know is if each object is consistent with the supposed time period and site that's given on the map. And while we've started to do that with the glass and stone kagok, that remains to be done for the rest of the objects in the case. So how do they compare with archeological finds from those sites? It remains a puzzle to be solved.